Hey, beautiful friends. This is Sarah Blumenfeld with Networking Done Different and Outreach of an Invitation to More.com. I am here today with Christy Smith of Neon Moon Astrology, and we are going to learn some astrology stuff today, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hope We're hoping that the Mercury retrograde gods work with us and they let us do this interview without any tech issues. Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you very much <laughs> in advance. <laughs> Tell us a little about you and how you got into astrology. Oh, what a story. Okay, I'll do the short version. Um, so I have a wild background, right? I was a bartender for years. I worked in sales for a long time. Um, and I got sober eight years ago from a nasty uh, battle with addiction. Mm. And, um, you know, I was told in order to kind of heal, heal the wound that I had on the inside. I needed to find a spiritual way of life. Mm -hmm. So I began praying. I began seeking spirituality in my life. And it began kind of this eight year seeking that, you know, searching journey that I've been on. And last year, a little over a year ago, I, I had a reading. It was such a God moment. Um, I was on this huge webinar with this world renowned astrologer, Deborah Silverman. And there were 13,000 people there, you oh, know, and it was my first um, glimpse into live readings, watching someone talk about it. And she pulled my chart in front of everyone. I was chosen that day. Whoa. Um, to be the chills everywhere. <laughs> I mean, my energy could have shattered the windows. It was such a God moment for me. I knew that it was very intentional. Yeah. Um, I had been searching for something new. I didn't want to do sales anymore. You know what I mean? I was searching for something meaningful in my life. And she yeah. read my chart in front of thousands of people. And it was the most potent reading I've ever had in my life. She knew me better than my closest friends. I was shocked and blown away. Mm -hmm. And I immediately enrolled in her uh, program. I, I fast tracked her entire program and um, I've been doing readings full time ever since. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that so much. It was a total plot twist for me. The most beautiful, unexpected plot twist of my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And now you can do that for other people. How's it get better? How cool. How cool to introduce it to others who were kind of, that many people I do readings for were are kind of in my position. They know nothing about astrology. They think it might be a little woo woo. I didn't, you know, didn't really believe in it. Didn't realize the accuracy of the mm -hmm. placement of the stars and how much they influence us. Yeah, we tend to think we're this little separate thing over here that just kind of occurred and we're connected to the universe. Yeah. And affected and by it. And there's such a comfort in that, you know, yeah. in realizing our togetherness and our wholeness and, and that we are celestial bodies and we hold the heavens in our soul. And it, there is no difference. We're, it's all the same, you know? Yeah. And God said, here's a little cheat sheet. Right, <laughs> the exactly. That <laughs> gave you a little peek, you know? And yeah. one of the rules of astrology is as above, so below, you know? And just, just like the heavens work and there's this masterful, mathematical clock working in the heavens you know it reflects on human life we can't deny that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so how does having a basic astrology reading help a person oh how does it help <laughs> so i would always recommend that uh first timers get a basic birth chart reading you know just kind of a, a deep dive into their birth chart that which is um an impression a snapshot of where all the planets and the and the um, celestial bodies were at the moment of their birth, all the constellations. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you a deep dive into exactly who you are and how you were made, mm -hmm. you know, your basic functions, your basic nature, what you're attracted to, what sets you off, you know, what, what fears you have. It's really a beautiful elemental breakdown of how you work. Yeah. And not, not to mention kind of life missions that you can decipher life mm -hmm. missions and promises and purpose factors. Um, but for me, the greatest um, gift that it gives is the permission. Mm. You know, the parts of ourselves we push away or deny or say that that's that's ugly. I don't like that. People don't like that. Um, mm. So many of those parts of ourselves that we deny that are that are so important, that are part of us innately, that that are, we're part of that were with us from before we even got here. Yeah. So the permission to accept ourselves fully and say, yes, I am that way. I know. I know, you know, it's like a remembering mm -hmm, mm -hmm. such a coming home process. Yeah. 
And then it doesn't it give you a little bit greater understanding maybe of how things have happened in your life and and maybe some direction of, okay, well, now that I know this, I can more clearly see a path. Totally. So when you zoom out from just the basic kind of um, examination of your birth chart, you can also, I love to take people in the past a little bit. There's dates that pop out, right? There's moments that our chart is activated. Um, awesome. that, sh that show kind of purpose markers. This is when you're, you're, you promised you were going to do something here, or you promised to lean into your reason for being here, mm -hmm. you know? So I love to take people back in time and examine the dates that their chart were activated. We can really see what big life purpose, you know, um, themes in our lives by doing mm -hmm. this. And then also we, we can look at, they call it predictive astrology. You know, mm -hmm. we can look at where all the planets are moving now and in the future, you know, mm -hmm. and see how it's going to affect you personally. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a psychic reading per se, but you can, based on evidence of how the planets interact with us, you can right. see where they're going to be in the future, how that's going to personally influence you and what that might bring in your life. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm, I'm old enough to have had my Saturn return. <laughs> how was that? <laughs> oh, it was really interesting. And, really? and I think Uranus returned too. When I, when I found out what period of my life that was, it was like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> right. And that's the beauty of getting ahead of it, of having, yes. of understanding the tool of astrology, having a reading done before some of these big events, because, mm -hmm. because people go into them blindfolded, you know, yeah. they're just yeah. flailing like, oh my gosh, my life is drastically changing or I feel stuck and I feel um, like I'm supposed to be doing something else. And there's something about knowing what energy is, is with you that like mm -hmm. opens your eyes. It's like you hear the call and you can take action accordingly. Yeah, That's how I've found for myself looking at my chart and seeing, oh, I've got a big Pluto transit coming. You know, I know life is going to shift pretty dramatically. And rather than resisting, I can say, okay, okay, God, okay, heavens. All right, stars, let's do that. Like I'm ready. You know, I'm walking right. into it eyes wide open. Yeah, yeah, that's valuable. Mm -hmm. So many people associate astrology with the sun sign, right? that has to do with your date of date time of birth. Um, so tell us what is the sun sign like minus Sagittarius? What does that tell you about how your life unfolds? So the sun sign, and you're right. Every, most people just identify with their sun sign. You say, what's your sign? A Sagittarius. Right. That means the sun was moving through the constellation of Sagittarius at the moment of your birth. Okay. And so all the other planets could have been elsewhere. You know, we're all kind of a multifaceted diamond. But the sun is the one we generally look to because it's kind of the broad strokes. The sun is such a powerful, you know, it's the, it's the most powerful, the biggest planet and star. So we look to it for really the broad strokes of our personality and how we shine. Okay. And a lot of times it will give us insight into how our human ego works. Mm. You know, the, the mm -hmm. sun is usually, it's a little bit more powerful. It's a little bit more demonstrative. And it says, this is how I want to be seen. Mm. So sometimes it's a little bit more of the human ego. And then we look to the softer planet like Venus or, or the moon to tell us how our inner or emotional nature might work. Okay. And the other one that I've heard is important is the rising sign. Tell us a little about that. Yeah. So we, as astrologers, we really look to the sun, moon, and rising placements to give okay. us like the rounded out kind of the full package of someone's personality in a quick <laughs> snapshot. Yeah. Um, so sun being ego, moon being your inner nature, your emotional body, okay. um, the placement of it. And then the rising sign shows where the horizon was at the moment of your birth. So it's not a planet, it's a placement. It's where the sun was rising. Oh, okay. And okay. that there's actually several different um, kind of theories on the rising. My favorite and the way that I was taught and evolutionary astrology kind of teaches it is that it's your soul. It's that mm. it's who you're rising to or, or aspiring to remember and, oh, and embody in this lifetime. So sometimes I've found in my readings, the rising sign is a little bit more of a quieter voice, mm. but when people can identify it, it feels mm. so comforting. And when they lean into their rising, they find liberation. That's where they really find the freedom of being. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's beautiful. So you said the first thing that people you would recommend is to have just the birth chart reading, your natal reading. And then do you have a recommendation of other types of readings or how often one could benefit from having? A 100%, oh, there's so many cool different styles of reading these days. Um, 
I always recommend starting with a basic birth chart reading. Let's get to know you. You know, that's so permission giving. It's so freeing. And then you can do, there's synastry readings where you compare two charts, the compatibility of two chart relationship readings. Okay. Um, my favorite is family karma readings, I call them, but it's just a kind of an examination of you and your family, oh, wow. your children, you know, and, and, and how they work emotionally. And there's usually, almost always, there's really profound, like hereditary markers, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I find fascinating. <laughs> um, there's predictive readings. I call them transit readings, where we just kind of spend some time looking at the energy that's going to be working with you in the next like six months to, to three years. Mm -hmm. you know, just to see what's coming up. So like I said, you can walk into it fully prepared, wow. you know, for what kind of energy you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot, tons of different types of readings. There's tons of different types of astrologers, you know, medical astrologers. Um, so there's, there, yeah, there's tons of different, different styles, but I always recommend a basic birth chart reading to start. Yeah. Do you do your readings uh, like this on Zoom or in person or both? All via Zoom. I've had some people request in person, but almost always I do them over Zoom. Yeah. yeah. And about a 50 minute, we spend about 50 minutes together. Okay. Okay. So all yeah, we need, all you need for a, a, a good astrology reading is your birthplace, your birth time and your birth date. And the more accurate the time, the better because minutes matter. Okay. Okay. And then do you also do readings like for the collective, like this is what's going on in the world and you might want to watch out for this or that kind of energy flying yeah, on? Yeah, you know, I don't, I, there is, that is a thing, right? And I watch other astrologers do this often. Yeah, um, yeah. I love to get a little bit more personal because it's it's so different for each one of us, Yeah, you know, but yeah. there is big collective um, kind of changes happening. Even right now, you know, Pluto is moving into Aquarius. For the collective, and this is a big event, you know, the age of Aquarius. Right, right. It was happening now. Um, and this is a big event for the collective. Um, right. and I also what I, I love to do group readings, um, you know, okay. where you can get a big group of people together and mm -hmm. kind of separate you into your elemental distributions, you know, my fire people here, my air people here, and see how it really shows up in everyday life, you know, your the astrology of your personality. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And you teach classes as well, right? Yes. I love, I love my classes. So I do astrology 101. Usually okay. I love to, I love um, to teach it to beginners who are just hungry for it. Um, but I do also offer astrology 102. So yes, I do zoom classes or in person astrology 101, astrology 102. We go a little bit deeper into it. Mm -hmm. I also do mentorship. So one-on-one -on -one mentorships mm -hmm. with those who either want to learn the art of astrology or are trying to get started in a spiritual business, you know, and I teach them the social media and kind of the business basics of starting a spiritual based business. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. It's a big undertaking. It's yeah, a big well, undertaking. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what are some common misconceptions that people have about astrology? Hmm. Oh, that's such an interesting question. I think mostly it's just that um, they don't realize the accuracy, the mathematics, the science in it. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many people who think it's very woo woo or they come to me and they believe that I'm, I'm, um, you know, um, doing like a psychic reading. Oh, okay. you know, they'll ask me if I see their loved ones. <laughs> oh, <okay>. and, and, <laughs> You know, I'm a Capricorn rising, which means that for me, I need empirical proof. I need um, validation. You know, I need I need facts to um, and really invest in something. Uh -huh. And so that's what I love about astrology. And I love shedding light on for other people because astrology, you know, is totally fact based, totally science based. You know, you can look at where the planets were in the heavens thousands of years back with something mm -hmm. called an ephemeris. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very scientific. It's very detail oriented. You know, it's not, it's not this woo woo. I'm feeling like you No, it's, it's really based in exactly right. what we're looking. I'm interpreting the placement of all the planets at the moment of your birth and what those through history and through evidence have proven shown on human life. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think it of... used to be a thing, right? I mean, it was, it was well-respected and in all the, the King's courts and all that stuff until hundred percent doctors, politicians, um, yeah. you know, everyone re uh, consulted with their astrologers before making right. big decisions. Queens yeah. and Kings had astrologers in their, in their court, yeah. you know? So it was really uh, highly acclaimed 
-hmm. very high, you know, they really, um, it was, it was, um, known as science, you know, yeah. it isn't yeah. anymore. <laughs> right. But, right. Yeah. Know, it was yeah. With we the, won't get into why that is, but <laughs> kind of with the rise of the church and, and, and religion yeah. and, and the age of enlightenment, you know, it, it, it became, they became very suspicious of astrologers. They mm -hmm. thought they were psychic. They were predicting things that they shouldn't have been, you know, they thought they were witches. Right. So, right. um, yeah, we went into hiding for a bit. <laughs> yeah. But it's become much more prominent again, you know, in everyday right. life, which I find beautiful because it's really just asking yourself the big picture questions. It's mm -hmm. really just seeking, you know, a higher explanation for who runs this place and what is the design here and what am I supposed to be doing here? You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who's running this place? Who runs this place? I like that. <laughs> I want to talk to them. I want to talk to the manager. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, well, what else would you like to share about the astrology with our friends? Oh, I just, you know, what I would just say is if you've never tried it, give it a shot. It is really mind blowing the way that it can bring you closer to you, give oh. you permission. You know, for me, I, I, um, I have so much fire in my chart, which means that I have a lot of energy, a lot of passion. I get excited easily. I'm quick to anger too. You know, and for so long, I, I, I tried to reel that in. I would make sure that I didn't speak too much. Okay, stop. I had this little voice that would say, okay, stop. Mm -hmm. let, let other people go. You're being too big. You're being too much. Mm -hmm. um, and something about seeing it all in, on paper, something about seeing it all and the intention and the purpose right. of it. I was supposed to be a fire girl. I was supposed to be bold and passionate and excitable. You know, yeah. it unleashed me. It unleashed me. And the yeah. amount of freedom I have felt in the last year of my life, the amount of self-acceptance, you know, and forward momentum I've gained just from a simple birth chart reading has been priceless for my life. Yeah. You know, so I really recommend everyone at least just give it a try just once. Right. And, and not to be overwhelmed by it. I, I have found that, I mean, astrology is vast. There is yeah. so much information and just take what resonates with you right now and don't try to understand the massiveness of it is my advice. <laughs> totally. You can get lost in the weeds. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Understanding just the basics is really, um, um, it's a, is really profound, you know, just the basics, you know, understanding mm -hmm. your elemental distribution, which means how many planets were fire signs or air signs, you know, just the basics mm -hmm. can really change your life. So yeah, getting, I would not recommend deep diving too quickly because it can be quite overwhelming. Right. Right. Awesome. How do people connect with you to learn about your classes, schedule a reading and so on? Oh, connect with me. I'm also uh, hosting my first retreat. We're doing, oh, tell us about retreat. that. Oh my goodness. I was contacted by a company on social media. They want um, to kind of uh, plan this full retreat. I will host. We're going to go do weird spiritual stuff. <laughs> Astrology readings. We're going to laugh and fart around in Bali. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So you can find out details about that on um, my Instagram, which is Christy underscore uh, Smith underscore astrology. Okay. And that'll take you to my link and, and the retreat. And also I have a website called neonmoonastrology.com where people can find me and okay. you can book your reading or your class or your mentorship, any of that through there or DM me on Instagram and I'll answer any questions you have. Okay. Fantastic. Sarah, awesome. have you had a reading? Have you had an astrology? I have, I have, yeah, but girl. I think I, I think I want to have a reading with you. <laughs> my sad sister. I would love that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Christy, thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, friends, for listening. We always appreciate you taking the time. If you would like to be interviewed, please email me at networkingdonedifferent at gmail.com. Bye for now. Bye.